Good morning, Trish here, Tucson, Arizona. It is October and it got cold and it's wonderful, but um, my fingers and my toes are cold. I'm wearing a little bit of toe socks this morning. We're gonna be doing yin, which does not warm us up. So I wanna encourage you to grab a heater and mittens and socks if you need them, if you're in a cold spot today. We are gonna work on stretching our big glute muscles, uh, working on piriformis syndrome, sciatica, that kind of stuff. Now, just a word of warning, sometimes these stretches can also inflame that area of the body, so be careful and stop whenever you need to, come out of the poses, skip things, do different things, whatever you like. Okay, so let's go ahead and start on our backs. Just laying back. You can feel free to keep your knees bent or you can stretch the legs out. And first, just take a few relaxing breaths, just letting yourself settle. Starting to notice how you feel. Try to use your nose as much as you can. And we're gonna do a little squeeze and release exercise that can begin to let the tension release from the body. So we're gonna begin by starting to inhale, gently curling the fingers into the palm, starting to squeeze the arm muscles, the shoulder blades, the belly, the glutes, the legs, flatten up the feet, curl those toes back, keep breathing in. And whenever you're ready, you're gonna let it all go as you exhale and soften, good. Take a few regular breaths, wiggling your toes and your fingers. And then we'll do that again, but this time we're gonna start with the feet. We're gonna flatten them up, curl the toes toward the knees, start to squeeze the leg muscles and then squeeze those glutes and then the shoulder blades, the belly, the back, the arms and into those hands, breathing in. And then when you're ready, letting it all go. <sighs> and move a little if you need to. We're just gonna do that one more time. And now we're just gonna pull everything in together, squeeze it all up as you inhale nice and deep, and then let it go. You can feel free to move your ankles and step those feet back onto the floor if they haven't been there already, rocking the knees. Let's go a little quicker. We're gonna warm up just a little bit before we get cooling down again into our yin flow. Rocking those knees side to side. I'm going a little quicker than I usually do. Not too far. We don't want to pull anything since we're still very cold. Maybe eventually the knees come in toward the chest. A little bit of rocking and rolling around through those hips. And then moving into our Akanasana. Inhaling as we let the knees rock away, maybe the toes touch the mat, and then exhaling, pulling those knees into the belly, back and forth with our breath. And you might begin to add a little leg lifting, stretching the legs out, and then pulling those knees back in on that exhale. Inhaling and stretching them out, Exhaling and drawing them in. You can add the arms if you'd like. Inhaling, arms over the head, legs reach out. Exhaling when we pull it back together. We're just bringing the body into a little bit of movement, getting the blood flowing this morning so we can feel our circulation, warming up our fingers and toes, maybe just once or twice more. And drawing the knees in, rocking a little side to side again. We're gonna roll over onto our side into seed pose. I like to plant my feet and roll on over. Take just a breath and then push upward to seated. And we're gonna start with square pose. So I like to plant my feet in front of me and decide which Foot is gonna go in front. So I'm gonna pull one foot in, but I'm not gonna pull it all the way into the glute here. I'm gonna keep it pretty far out, almost parallel to this outer edge of the mat. And then the other foot comes down in front of that foot. Now, when you come into a seated pose, you might feel like you need to lean back. And that's a good indication that you need to sit up on something. So I like to sit up on a blanket. And that just gets my pelvis rocking forward 
and then I can get into my pose a little deeper and settle in. And then maybe the feet kind of scoot outward a little so that the knees can be in more of a square position from the hips rather than being out wider we're pulling them inward and this just creates tension in the hip joint so that when we lean forward we get that deep stretch especially in that front leg okay now the hands can rest in the lap out behind you or out in front which is where i like mine to be and you'll only walk them as far forward as your low back and your hips will allow. And you wanna stay in that area of tension and then begin to breathe and try to release some of that tension. So it turns out that muscular tension in the gluteus maximus is sometimes related to anger. <laughs> to help us let go of this big muscle and those hard emotions, there are a couple of things that we can do. We can allow ourselves to feel it. There's a phrase that says, feel it to heal it. One of the easiest ways to let go of muscle tension is to actively feel and let go of emotions when they come. It's funny that it says, it says it's one of the easiest ways because it's not easy. I got this information from a website written by Leah Sugarman. And uh, she has these beautiful things to say about sciatica and piriformis that I'll be reading to you today. And I just think it's interesting, this idea of letting go. So of course, it's not always possible to feel our feelings in the moment. So maybe at the end of each day, we could allow ourselves some space and time to feel the emotions that we had during that day. And this can actually help relieve tension in the body. That is a really beautiful idea. And then another way we could do it is to adopt an attitude of non-judgment. That's very yoga very yoga to let go of judgment to not do that harm to ourselves internally when we judge our emotions as bad or wrong we actually deepen our suffering and solidify the tension within our muscles instead we could practice realizing that an emotion is just an emotion it doesn't need to mean anything about us unless we let it. Let's just take two more breaths here. And slowly lift your head, walk your hands in and take them back behind you, reaching back and then slowly stretching those legs wider and wider maybe rocking a little, maybe just stretching them out and taking several deep breaths here. When you're ready, think back. I should have had you remember already which foot was in front because we want to put the other one in front now. So I'm going to tuck that one that was in front in first and then cross the other one in front of that. And if you don't remember, it's actually okay to do the same side twice. Maybe you need that. <laughs> I know it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun to do yin and not have any big rules. All right, so once you get nice and tall, you're up on your support. If you need one, you're gonna start leaning into those hips again. And the reason we just simply switch legs is because the leg that's in front is the one that gets the deeper stretch because it's the farther from the center there. Coming into your shape on one side, you might feel like you can go a little deeper on the other side, it just doesn't happen. Just allow that asymmetricness in your body, allow yourself to be different and start to just breathe naturally, settling in. And that usually means you might need to readjust. 
Here's a few more things we can do to help with tension that we hold in our glutes. We might practice being gentle with ourselves. Muscle tension tends to add to our negative inner voices, which can cause us even more tension. To break the cycle of the body feeling the mind and the mind feeling the body, be kind toward yourself. Treat yourself as you would a child or a best friend. This practice is simple, but a profound way to relax. As you're leaning into your hips here, you might let your head sag forward a little bit, or you might just move it gently up and down or side to side. Breathing deeply is another way that actually helps reduce tension. Shallow breathing causes restriction in air, blood flow, toxin removal, and increased anxiety. Deep breathing stimulates the vagus nerve, which calms the mind. And finally, of course, stretching your muscles. Doing simple stretches like yoga to relax your muscles, even just five minutes a day is beneficial. Just a few minutes of stretching can really help. Just take one more breath here, relaxing and slowly coming up to seated and leaning way back, oh. planting the feet, wiggling the toes and rocking those knees side to side. We just have one more seated position and a little meditation to release anger before we go on to our hands and knees. So let's go ahead and sit up slowly and stretch the legs out wide. Strangely enough, this position in and of itself can be very good for relieving sciatica pain, that pinched nerve that can go all the way down the leg. So I'm just gonna sit up nice and straight. I'm still sitting on my blanket. My feet are flat. Toes curling back, just a little bit of engagement, maybe a little bit of wiggling in the toes. And then maybe I'll bring the hands to the inside of my legs and lean forward. You, it, sometimes it's nice to use a block or two to lean into. Sometimes I build a little block tower. Now, if you have osteoporosis, then you're probably just gonna lay your arms on those blocks. Even if you don't, that might feel really good. What I want you to avoid is placing your head on blocks that can cause rounding in the spine. So if you're okay with your, your back and you don't have any of that soft bone stuff, then you can feel free and round a little bit. It's probably better for everybody to just stay nice and flat. Good, as you settle in, start to soften your feet and let them kind of go. And you'll feel that stretch. What it does is it goes into the ligaments that are connecting inside the glutes. Okay, so here's our anger meditation. You're, you can either fold your thumbs in to your palm. You can just simply make a gentle fist. Either one is okay. And then we're just gonna let the hands float down, maybe even have them in front of you wherever you'd like them to be. And what we're gonna do is walk through a quick meditation, think of, thinking first about an experience that we've had where we got angry and imagining what that looked like. And then we're gonna go back into that experience and we're gonna imagine it with us acting calmly. So we get to kind of reprogram our thoughts. Okay, so take a few deep breaths. Feel free to let that mudra go if that's not interesting to you. You can feel free to close your eyes, maybe seal your lips and breathe gently through your nose. Keep softening your body and begin by remembering an incident in which you became angry or irritated. Picture the incident very clearly. Go over it in detail. Be particularly aware of how angry you felt and allow yourself to relive the incident once or twice until you have created a firm mental picture. Take a deep breath. And now let's change the image. See yourself in the same situation, but remaining calm and breathing deeply. 
Consciously let the anger move through you and take one of your hands, take two fingers together and point them toward the floor and let the anger drain down out of your arm. You can take both arms if that feels even better. Peace fingers pointing toward the earth. Let that anger move through you and pour out through your hands and go over that several times. Be in the situation, calm and breathing deeply, letting the anger pour out. And when you have finished, you can open your eyes and bring your palms together for several deep breaths. And begin to lift your head and walk the hands in and slowly lean back. Lift the heart. <laughs> you can start to bend your knees and maybe rock them a little bit. We are going to really slowly move into our hands and knees position on a table pose. We want to make sure and move that spine a little bit today, rocking the pelvis. This is a, a, the safest place to round your spine, but don't push too hard. If you are feeling cold, you can feel free to lift up into a down dog and stretch the back of the body a few times. It's okay to warm up those muscles if you ever feel cold in your yin practice. You can try a child's pose. And we are moving toward dragon. We have not practiced dragon in a while and we have an, a very good alternative to dragon pose. Let me just take my sweater off so you can see me better. So dragon is where we take one foot and bring it forward. And I like to use blocks inside my front foot to just lift my shoulders so I don't get too rounded in my spine. I like them on about the half setting, but you can put them higher if you need to. And this is a big stretch right through that glute. And I like to have that foot a little bit wider than my shoulder and my hip. And then I'm gonna start to sink into that back leg. This is dragon. Okay, for those of us who know that that is not sustainable because we're gonna be there for two minutes, I'll start that timer now. If you'd prefer to do this on your back, it is simply a half happy baby. So you'll grab one leg, pull it back, the other leg is long, the foot is wide. And remember that if on one side, you feel like you're okay to be on your knees, you can stay there and then switch onto your back for the other side. Okay? All right, this is an exciting pose. <laughs> So let's go back into this idea of the piriformis muscle. It is a little muscle that goes right, it's right in the middle of your glutes. Your glutes have our layers of muscles and this one goes right in the middle. It's a little muscle that can cause a big pain. In our modern world, we're highly susceptible to a number of incongruencies in the body because of weaknesses and flexibilities within certain muscles. This is particularly true of the piriformis due to one very important factor, sitting. <laughs> it is said that sitting is the new smoking and this may very well be the case when it comes to conditions such as piriformis syndrome. It is a condition in which one or both of the piriformis muscles compresses and irritates the sciatic nerve, which runs beneath or in some people through the piriformis muscle, causing literal pain in the buttocks and or tingling and numbness. We still have about 30 seconds left. You have permission to come out of this pose or rock yourself in and out if you're feeling like it's too much tension on those, those ligaments in the hip joint. We're just gonna take one more breath here and begin to rock those hips back. 
and drag that front foot back so that the knees are side by side. Bring the hands to the floor and swing the hips. Let's actually bring our elbows to the floor so we can get off of our wrists. Open and close the hands. Twist them out a little bit. You can let your head hang. If you would like to open up the hips really wide, you can start to step your legs further back and maybe even come down for a moment into a sphinx pose, opening up the front of the body. We're just gonna take a couple breaths here and do the other side, and then we will end up on our bellies to really get that belly stretch. Take another breath or two, and then moving slowly back to table pose. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the other way so that I can still see you. You can just simply bring your other foot forward using those blocks to help take the strain out of that lumbar spine. Scooting the foot as far forward as you like, having the hands on the inside, stretching into the hip. Okay. The piriformis muscle is both an external rotator of the femur, the thigh bone, and a stabilizer of the sacroiliac joint, which is on the right around the tailbone. So it's got a lot of work to do here. Also, what it's saying is that it's moving the hip in every direction that it can. So it's very involved in our walking and therefore it needs to move. And sitting, that's why sitting is its enemy. <laughs> because it has a mirror of itself on either side of the body, one side can be weaker than the other, since we have two of them, of course. And we tend to be asymmetric, and one side of our body tends to be tighter than the other. And so this can cause instability and consequentially pain within and around the sacroiliac joint and the pelvis in general. While excessive sitting can lead to weakness and tightness within the piriformis muscles, the opposite may also be true. Overusing these muscles by active, overuse by active athletes like runners may also cause similar symptoms and pain. And I think that's why I always wanna start off when we stretch this muscle by saying, don't go too far, because that can also create issues. Just one more breath. Shifting those hips up really slowly and dragging that foot back. You can let go of the blocks, come down onto your elbows, twist out the wrists, let the head hang. We are gonna really slowly move into our Sphinx pose. Remember, you can always fold up a blanket to put under your hips if you feel like that is supportive for your low back. As you slowly come down, opening those hip flexors and relaxing. <laughs> nice work. You can lay your head down for a few breaths or you can come right into your Sphinx pose. We'll be in Sphinx for two or three minutes, kind of up to you how long. I'll set the timer for three, and we can always go up into our higher back bend whenever you like, and we'll do that after this. We'll just take a few breaths here. Sphinx pose is not an easy pose. I like to have my legs a little wider apart that somehow kind of releases my low back. I like to have my elbows under my shoulders. I like to grab my opposite elbows with my hands. Some people like to put their hands together in front or some people like the hands flat on the floor, like a Sphinx from Egypt. <laughs> and then the head and the neck are kind of up to you. Sometimes I like to lift the shoulders. Sometimes I let them sag. It's really up to you. <sighs> Just keep breathing deeply, stretching the front of the body, conscious of that low back and what it needs. If it needs you to go lower, lower down. If it needs you to go higher, you can, you can walk those elbows further in. So of course, 
yoga comes to the rescue for us with our piriformis syndrome. Fortunately, yoga may help to alleviate some of the symptoms associated with this pain, or it might even help eliminate its causes. Yin yoga is the perfect practice to elongate stiff muscles and stretch connective tissue as postures are held for extended periods of time in order to apply mild, healthy stress on the joints and connective tissues. It can be an ideal practice for those that suffer from piriformis syndrome. This sequence is designed to lengthen the piriformis muscles and their surrounding tissues. However, if this practice creates further irritation to this sensitive area, it may be wise to work on strengthening the piriformis muscles and their connective tissues before we stretch them. And of course, we don't know that until we've tried. <laughs> we've been here for about two minutes. Feel free, if you'd like, to spread those palms out wide out to those top corners of the mat and lift a little higher. Or you can feel free to come down and out of the pose at any time and relax really up to you where you need to go at this point. As with any health issue, it is highly recommended to check in with your health care provider before beginning something new. <laughs> it should be noted as with any yin practice, you should move slowly and mindfully. Overstretching or activating the muscles, especially those that are inflamed, can cause reaction. Approach this practice with caution and allow your body and your breath to be your guides as you find the appropriate depth in each individual pose. And slowly come down out of your back bend. That was a full three minutes. And relax. Breathe deeply right down into your belly. Just watching that low back slowly come out of its curve. Now, if you really love to take a child's pose after your back bend, you can do that. Or the alternative today is to roll over onto your side into seed pose, which is where we are all going to end up for our next shape. But we're gonna take a while in our seed pose to relax. Stacking the knees, maybe placing something under your head, support it and just breathing here softening especially letting that low back get soft the more we pull the knees in toward the chest the more we get that flattening in the low back so it's kind of up to you how far you'd like to go with that this is our child's pose on our side <laughs> a couple more breaths Maybe just one or two more breaths as you find yourself in your side lying position. We'll just wiggle our fingers and toes, make sure they're not too cold. <laughs> and we're going to start to stretch both legs straight out in front of us. Maybe on a little diagonal would be fine too. And then we'll take the top leg and start to stretch it down to the bottom of the mat. And you can let the toes touch the floor there. I kind of have to scooch my hips a little bit to feel okay here. And then we're gonna start to come up onto our elbows. And this is a twisted sphinx pose. And you will feel that pull right across that bottom leg. I'm gonna start to bend my knees a little bit so I can lay that top leg down on the floor. Keep, keep yourself as turned toward the top of your mat as is comfortable to you. And it might not be comfortable, so you might kind of stay on a little bit of a curve. We just want to really get the stretch down into that glute. You could even walk yourself up a little higher. And that bottom leg, straightening it out, 
ah, then they can really feel that stretch wherever it is for you. Like different bodies are gonna have that sensation in different positions. So if you need to have that bottom knee bent and the elbows low, please stay there. Just settle in and see what you feel. You're also gonna feel a lot of squish right in that belly, that's okay. That might help, that's why walking the hands in might help a little bit. Just feeling the breath, softening the shoulders, and letting go. Imagine that as you stretch that beautiful big muscle, you're letting go of those hard emotions, a little bit of sadness, a little bit of grief, some more anger. You can let your head hang if it feels right. We have about 30 seconds left in the pose. That's usually about five or six breaths. Feel free and count those breaths just to stay present with your body as you stretch. Slowly start pushing yourself up. And we're gonna start to bend that back knee and pull it forward a little bit as we sit up with our legs in kind of a pinwheel shape. Now, if that's not gonna work for you, please stretch the back leg out. Take good care of yourself. You don't have to stay in any one position, okay? We are gonna move into our next shape right away. It's kind of a sister shape. It's a variation of pigeon pose, so we can pull that front knee in a little bit. Now we were facing off the side of our hip down the mat. Now we're gonna face a little bit, not straight forward, but a little bit on an angle. And we're gonna lean into that front bent leg. And you might not go very far. I don't have to go far at all to really feel that stretch. If you would like to, you always have permission to go into a full pigeon pose here. You can, if you need anything under the knee, sometimes it helps to lift it up a little. If it's not working for you and it doesn't feel good at all, then feel free and straighten the leg out. Leaning down the length of the leg, you're still gonna get a great stretch. Just taking care of that knee. Practicing our yoga can be an essential tool in helping to alleviate the symptoms of tension in the glute muscles that some call piriformis syndrome. However, looking at our daily patterns in our life may contribute to the condition and may prove to create long lasting effects. If we sit too much, we can try taking short walking breaks whenever possible. Practicing simple stretches and yoga poses even while sitting at the desk. Gently move your body as often as possible to release built up tension and activate dormant tissues. If you overuse your piriformis muscles, try to give them a break to rest and recover. And if it helps, practice this sequence or at least pieces of it regularly and consistently. Notice when you breathe in where you feel that tension and then as you breathe out, consciously let go of those muscles. Sometimes it even helps to squeeze a little and then relax like we did at the beginning of class. We have about 30 seconds left, five or six more breaths.
gently begin to walk yourself in and lift up. We're gonna lean back and drag those legs around. We are going to lay all the way back on our backs. You might wanna go up to the other end of the mat that you than you were before, so we can still face the camera. <laughs> just lying down and relaxing. You can just let the legs fall where they fall. A knee might be bent, a leg might be long. And we are gonna rest here, really rest. We're gonna take a full, minute of shavasana just letting the body do nothing at all feel free to grab a blanket if you're getting cold or to take a minute and um, turn on your heater <laughs> and just breathe try to use your nose as much as you can Let's just take two more deep breaths here. And slowly begin to move your feet and then slide them up onto the floor and rock the knees a little bit. We're gonna eventually roll over now onto our other side into our seed pose. The knees can be pulled in, just softened. And then we're gonna start to stretch the legs straight out in front of us. Nice and long. And the top leg starts to swing down to the end of the mat. And we start to push ourselves up onto our elbows, crawling them onto the mat. We can stay low, let the knees slightly bend and soften or come up a little higher. Just settle into your pose. Feel free to readjust those hips so you can feel the stretch that's going on right underneath that long leg. Of course, the knees can be much more bent if you need them to be. We're still really turning away from the legs up the length of the mat. So we're getting a nice little twist here. And of course, that deep leg stretch. And after a while, sometimes we get into a pose and we watch the teacher and we watch the other people and we think, are we doing it right? I want you to do that if you need to and then start to let that go and just kind of close your eyes and feel into your body. Your body might be tense or loose in a different place today than other people. So you might not be feeling exactly what I'm describing. Just let that be your experience. Let yourself practice that deep breathing, that non-judgment which actually helps release tension. Let's just take three more deep breaths here. You might even start to come down for a moment. And as we come out of the pose, we're moving upward, leaning back a little bit as we drag the legs slightly forward into that pinwheel shape. Both knees bent, one leg is in more in front, one leg's more in back. I'm gonna kind of scoot my hips underneath me so I can sit up nice and tall. And you can kind of feel that release a little bit in the back. And remember, you can lean forward here as much as you'd like, or you can take the hands on either side of that front knee and walk yourself down over it. 
especially if there's any kind of osteoporosis, you might want to use a block to help keep yourself a little bit more lifted. Let's see if we can get there. Really nice pigeon stretch here, getting into that hip again. And of course, if you want to do full pigeon, you can stretch that leg back. And of course, if one leg doesn't want to be bent, you can straighten that leg out, whichever leg it is. You're still going to get a nice stretch. And just move yourself back into your awareness of your breath and where you might still be holding something on, some, holding on to something. <laughs> And feel that the amazing gift of our yin practice is that as we get into our bodies and start to really notice what they're feeling in the moment, we might also come across some of those emotions and feelings that we have been ignoring or really didn't notice. So if you notice anything, just take deep breaths, feel it, think about it, eventually letting it go. Gently lifting your head, walking the hands in toward the body, taking your time, moving in slow motion. We are going to lay all the way back and we're going to stay there on our backs. So if there's anything you need to bring with you, a blanket or a pillow or anything, your, your mittens or your socks. <laughs> it's really cold today. <laughs> Take your time, lay back on your back. If you need to move, feel free to move or just stretch out and be still again. If you feel the need to move and stretch or warm up a little bit, feel free. We're going to be on our back for the rest of the time. Let's move a little bit whenever you're ready, rocking the knees side to side, moving the hands. Let's pull the knees into the chest. Give them a little squeeze, rocking there. Let's move back into our opening and closing of the knees, inhaling, rocking them away, uh, exhaling and pulling them in. And of course, you can add any long movements of the legs as well. Maybe draw one knee in and stretch the other leg out, just stabilizing that SI joint, keeping the back with a gentle, slight curve away from the floor. So you've got your shoulders pressing down, your hips, the tailbone is touching the floor there. Good. Bringing those knees in and rocking one more time, side to side. Let's move into our figure four shape. Now for this, I usually like to use a block under my foot on the floor. So I'm gonna put one of my feet on the block <laughs> And I'm gonna take the other foot and cross the ankle in front of the thigh. Yep. And this is usually enough of a stretch. For me, if you feel like it's not enough, then you're gonna be pulling those knees in towards your chest, wrap, maybe wrap the hand around the thigh, or as an even better alternative, just grab the foot and the knee of that front leg and draw it in towards your chest. 
you should get that really deep outside hip stretch on the hip of the leg that's in front of you, okay? And just settle in there for several deep breaths, probably about 10 or maybe even 15. And we can work on a little affirmation from Louise Hay from her book, You Can Heal Your Life. She, she says that the piriformis issues might be caused by fear. So one person suggested maybe anger <laughs> and some people suggest fear. I say all of those hard emotions create tension in my body. So I love the idea of practicing different ways of letting them go. And this is her affirmation to let go of our muscle tension in our glutes. I move into my greater good. My good is everywhere. I am secure and safe. So you might pick one of those three. I move into my greater good. My good is everywhere. I am secure and safe. Feel free to repeat those to yourself or simply breathe in the shape. Let's take another breath here. And you have two options for our next piece of this sequence. The first option is you can just keep sliding that leg onto the other thigh until the thighs are crossed. And you can take your foot off the block and walk your feet over, maybe scoot your hips over a little bit away from your, where your knees are gonna drop. We drop the knees over into our twisted roots twist with the legs crossed, if that's okay. Now I wanna give you another option because this is a little too much for my low back. So as another option, you'll take the leg that's on top and you'll grab those toes or the ankle and you'll just pull them out and go wide into that half happy baby. And you can keep the knee bent that is not being held up or you can stretch that leg out. So you've got those two positions. You're either in a twisted roots twist or you've got that half happy baby. Just letting go, stretching into those hips with deep breaths. Let's take three more breaths together. Slowly coming out of whichever shape you chose, letting the feet be on the floor. The knees can be bent at first, maybe rock, or just let those knees knock together feeling what's going on in your low back and in that hip that was stretched, just resting, feeling free to move whenever you like, or maybe stretch out. Eventually starting to rock the knees side to side. Feel free to pull those knees into the chest. Maybe take a few more of those 
one leg in, one leg out stretches just to make sure blood is still flowing. <laughs> As we slowly move into the other side of that sequence, I'm going to move my block under my other foot. Take that new leg in front, cross the ankle. You can stay there, you can pull them in, you can just hold on to the front leg. <laughs> All those good things to do. Continually letting go of any tension. Letting your face be soft, your neck and shoulders loosen, belly wider, kind of spreading out on the floor, and sinking into the stretch. Let's just take two more breaths here together. And if you've had your foot on a block, you'll just push it away. Let the foot come to the floor. We can scoot the hips if we're going to do the twist. Scoot the hips away from the direction we're going to rock. So close up those thighs, crossing the legs and rocking the knees over. Arms might go wide. You might slide a block underneath the knees to support them. They don't have to go all the way to the floor. Or, of course, you can take that alternative pose, grabbing that top foot or ankle or even holding on behind the thigh, moving into your half happy baby. The other knee can stay bent or straight. And just breathe. Maybe trying that affirmation one more time. I move into my greater good. My good is everywhere. I am secure and safe. Let's take two more breaths. And gently release out of that pose. And from here, you can move for just a few breaths or as many as you need as you move towards Shavasana. Of course, I always want to encourage you to put your legs up the wall or over your couch <laughs> or maybe a blanket under the knees. Any way that you can kind of bend the knees or get the feet up in the air can help release that low back. Feel free to grab blankets and sweaters and anything else you need if you're cold today. Turn on that heater and settle in for your Shavasana.
As we rest in Shavasana today, I want to invite you to do a little visualization for world peace. <laughs> we start with hopes for peace in our own bodies, releasing the tension and letting it go. And we move from there outward. With every exhale, imagine peace filling in those spaces where the tension likes to reside. Peace between your bones, peace in your home, in your kitchen, in your living room, dining room. Imagine peace filling the space with every exhale, moving outward from your home into the, room, the space around the house, the neighborhood, peace between neighbors, peace between friends, peace between people we don't know, strangers. Maybe you've had an experience at a store or at a stoplight. Just imagine peace filling that area up with every exhale. Peace between the cars, peace between the, the sides of town, peace. Peace among the governors and the people who sit on boards, administrations, everywhere, peace. Peace in our world. Let the peace flow out from you surrounding this part of the country, this side of the world, and eventually the whole globe surrounded with beautiful peace. And you might chant with me in the, either in your head or out loud to yourself. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. That last sound is an H U M. Om Mani Padme Hum. Feel free to start wiggling your fingers and toes, rolling over, taking your time. Remember, we move so slowly, Indian. Om Mani Padme Hum. Feel free to come up to seated, palms together, and we just bow to that place of peace that does reside in each of us. May we see that in each other. Thank you so much. Namaste.